Hi guys, I'm here with your Bible reading. I hope you guys are having a good day. Enjoying this pretty day. It's nice and sunny out there. It was supposed to rain today according to the weather that I seen, but it doesn't look like it's going to now. Sherm says it's really hot out there. I don't know what the temperature is. Very hot. That's the temperature. Very hot. I got this scarf today from okay. my. Where are you going? Pharmacy! Pharmacy! Okay. Gotta go to the pharmacy again. They owe me more antibiotics. Okay. I got this beautiful scarf today for my birthday from my Aunt Dora, who came to visit me today. And it <coughs> came with the pocketbook. The scarf matches the inside of the pocketbook lining. It's really, really pretty. The pocketbook's red, like this dark color red. I've already switched out my purse to my new one. Trust your case. No, that's the other one. Overnight bag. Yes, that's what Cindy said. The big one was for when I go somewhere, spend the night. That's was a duffel bag. No, it's not. It's smaller than the other one. That's a double bag. I can just carry more stuff now. Yeah! I did. I filled it up, too. I put my camera tripod in there. And <laughs> everything. My little tripod. It's like I got room to put stuff in a bag now. You need to empty that drawer out right here. I, I put some stuff out of that drawer in my purse. Some, some hair ties. And <laughs> Since I got a bigger purse now, I can carry the wallet that Mom got me a year or two ago. My cross wallet. I couldn't carry it because my pocketbook was too small for the wallet. Because it's one of those big ones, you know. But it fits very well in this one. So I'm glad I'm able to carry it too. <clears throat> okay guys, well, um, I don't know if I said this already, but we will be um, reading Romans chapter 4 verse 13, reading through chapter 5 verse 5 today. Yesterday at the end we started talking about Abraham and... I was trying to explain how Abraham trusted God and trusted him when it came to very, very serious things like remember sacrificing his son his son Isaac who was considered, you know, his Abraham's only son, but he actually had another son before Isaac by a son. Okay by his wife's slave girl and it was a boy and they named him Ishmael but when Sarah became pregnant his wife Sarah got jealous after the Ishmael and had Abraham send Ishmael and his mother away but God took care of them too but anyway um, his son Isaac so it had been like his only son he was god was telling him to sacrifice and abraham was going to do it remember for just because he trusted in god and to prove that he loved god over anyone else even even his son even his own life god was number one to him but when he was bringing the knife down to pierce his son's heart an angel of the Lord stopped him so he didn't have to sacrifice him I don't think God was you know really going to have him sacrifice him anyway God was just doing it I think to see if Abraham whether he would listen to him whether he would trust him or he would you know, my love for my son is greater than my love for you, Lord. So the Lord wanted to see 
how great his love was, Abraham's love was for him, to see if it was above everything else. And Abraham proved that it was, and God rewards him for that. And you'll see that today, which also rewarded us, since Abraham is the father, father of us all, earthly father of us all. <clears throat> God is our father. Abraham's our earthly father. You'll hear that. You'll hear about Abraham being our father today to our earthly father. Um, our psalm today is Psalm 14 for the director of music of David. It's just another short psalm. I get kind of sad when the psalms of David's are short. <laughs> because they're so beautiful. I love reading David's Psalms. And we got one little proverb today. You know, I was feeling pretty good earlier. I'm start I feel really sick right now. You know, really nauseated. I don't know, maybe it's from my medicine that I took or something. Because, you know, some eat or eat. Take take on an empty stomach and other ones is like take with food and I can't keep an ultra if you knew how many pills I have. I can't keep track of them all and they're all they're all say something different like that. So you know I'm sick every, every day anyway, but I just feel a little nauseous, but I'm okay. I'm still having a good day compared to what I've been having. The last few days were horrible. Yesterday evening when I made the video, I was feeling pretty good then. Actually felt better then than I do now, but I don't feel too bad. I think I'm thinking that dad will come today. It's my birthday and I think he'll show up this evening. Him and maybe his girlfriend Jody. I think they'll show up. I got the windows open. That's where I'm looking. I keep watching because they come up and knock on the window so we can let them in because they keep the outside doors locked here in our building. So that's why I keep looking to see if they're coming. He's been coming every year on my birthday, so that's why I think that he will. But like I said, I'll let you guys know. But I had company today. My Aunt Dora that I haven't seen in... I don't know how long, really. It seems like forever. I actually don't remember the last time I seen her. You know, my memory's crappy anyway, but if I'm not mistaken, I haven't seen her at least in a year or two. Am I wrong? I don't know. Because I think the last time I seen her was when I was down at Cindy's, when we were all down there. And that's been a year or two ago. It was right after Dottie passed away. And that was in 2015, so that would have been two years. And my Aunt Pat was here with them, and Cindy was here, and Mom was here, and Abby was here. Abby came. I asked her last night if she was going to come with them, and she said yes, but I really didn't think she would because I didn't think she'd want to get up that early. But I was really surprised when she walked in today. And she took some Snapchat pictures of us together and stuff. <laughs> My face looked too fat in them. I didn't like it. <laughs> I said, Ab, this makes my face look fat. Like it's not really fat, you know. <laughs> By itself. I hope, I hope Dad brings Jimmy with him tonight so I can see him too. I, Mom just told me a little bit ago that Jimmy is running around with my sister Melly today. So I'm thinking maybe since Jimmy's with Melly that 
you know, he'll get with dad later and get to come out here with him when he comes. That's what I'm hoping. Because I'd really like to see him too. Hardly ever get to see him. I don't get to see hardly anybody. I see Cindy maybe once or twice a month and mom when she comes with Cindy and that's it. <laughs> that's it. But as I know everybody's okay, so. I'm still very, very happy and very, very blessed. I better get started here, hadn't I? Instead of rambling on, I'm rambling on a little bit because Sherm left for the pharmacy and I don't want to get the video stopped before he gets back. So I don't know how much time we're up to now. But let me get started with the video and hopefully we don't get cut off. If we do, you'll never see this video because I'll be making another one. <laughs> but we'll see here. So, in case I didn't say because in my mind I can't remember, we will be reading Romans chapter 4 today, verses 13, reading through chapter 5, verse 5. And we got a psalm and one Proverbs. All right, so if you'd like to follow along, we'll be reading in the New International Version. And let's get started. Very good reading today. Just set back. You don't, you know, I was going to say, you don't even got to look at me. I'm nobody important. I want you to hear the words. If I could make these videos without having to show myself, if I knew how to do that, I'd do it. I just want you guys to... Set back, close your eyes if you want to close your eyes. If not, you can watch. But just set back, clear your minds, and just listen to the words that I'm reading to you from the Bible. Just let the words sink into your heart and into your mind and think about what I'm reading, what I'm reading to you. These are actual people, real people and went through these things just like we are going through it's I know it I'm reading it so it's like a story because you didn't know these people just like you read another book and it's like a story characters and a story but these people were really real and Abraham started us all and you'll see today some more but just listen to the words today and think about that when I'm reading. That these were actual real people, our ancestors. Ones who walked the earth before us. And how they lived their lives and stuff. Okay, now I'm ready, I think. It was not through the law that Abraham and his offspring received the promise that he would be heir of the world, but through the righteousness that comes by faith. Remember talking about how much faith Abraham had in God? Remember about sacrificing his son and other things? For if those who depend on the law are heirs, faith means nothing, and the promise is worthless, because the law brings wrath, and where there is no law, there is no transgression. So if there's no law, then you're not committing a crime. It's basically what it's saying. So, therefore, the promise comes by faith, so that it may be by grace, and may be guaranteed to all Abraham's offspring, not only to those who are of the law, but also to those who have the faith of Abraham. He is the father of us all, as it is written, I have made you a father of many nations. That's what God said to Abraham. I have made you a father of many nations. And this was somebody who was almost a hundred years old and his wife was old too. And she was barren, couldn't have children. He had no children at this time. And God told him this and he believed him 
even being that old, he believed God was going to make him. I have made you a father of many nations. He was going to be the father of thousands, all of us. But where did we come from if he didn't have no kids, right? Abraham would think, I'm almost 100. You don't know what you're talking about. Yeah, right. But did he do that? No. He had faith. He is our Father in the sight of God, in whom he believed. The God who gives life to the dead and calls into being things that were not. Against all hope, Abraham in hope believed and so became the father of many nations. Just as it had been said to him, so shall your offspring be. Without weakening in his faith, he faced the fact that his body was as good as dead since he was about a hundred years old and that Sarah's womb was also dead, Sarah's wife. Yet he did not waver through unbelief regarding the promise of God, but was strengthened in his faith and gave glory to God, being fully persuaded that God had power to do what he had promised. He didn't just hope that that would happen. Like you're saying, somebody tells you, blah, 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 this is going to happen, that's going to happen, or I'm going to do this or that for you, and you know, yeah, okay, that, that'll be nice. And you're thinking in your head, you know, if that ever happens, that'll be nice. Uh -uh. When God said that, Abraham gave glory to him and he believed it with his heart, his whole heart. He had no doubt. He believed and knew it would happen. Okay? This is why it was credited to him as righteousness. The words it was credited to him were written not for him alone, but also for us, to whom God will credit righteousness, for us who believe in him, who raised Jesus our Lord from the dead. He was delivered over to death for our sins and was raised to life for our justification. Sure. Could you tell me the time, please? Sure, just came back in a few minutes ago. Therefore, since we have been justified through faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have gained access by faith into this grace in which we now stand. 1745. Okay. Thank you. And we boast in the hope of the glory of God, not only so, but we also glory in our sufferings, because we know that suffering produces perseverance. Perseverance character and character hope and hope does not put us to shame because God's love has been poured out into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us all right and that's where we're going to stop with the book of Romans today wasn't that a good reading did you listen to it with your heart The words really sink in when you do. The people in the Bible don't just become characters in a story. When you let it sink in and get to know them, like getting to know Jesus through the Bible and having him in your life, accepting him into your life and into your heart being saved, it's you're reading about family. You're reading about people who loved you before they even knew you because you were going to be their family, our ancestors. Just like if the world lasts for hundreds and hundreds of more years or longer, our kids, nieces, nephews, what have you, on down the line, let's say like a hundred years, they might think people are telling stories about us you know, I didn't know them. I don't believe that happened. You know, they're probably wasn't even real. That was like, what, a hundred years ago? I can't believe, you know, I can't even picture a hundred years ago that somebody existed, you know? It'd be like them not believing in us either because they've never seen us. They've just heard about us. But that's what we're hearing. We're hearing about our family through the Bible. God is telling us the stories. 
of where we came from and where we're going if we do good and if we do bad. Accepting Jesus into our hearts will go to heaven. If not, you go to hell. And that's no place anybody wants to be. You wouldn't even want your worst enemy going there. People think hell's just a made up place, but it's not, it's real. And people think, you know, some people think it's not gonna be that bad, oh well, at least I'll be down there with so and so, or I'll be doing this or that. It's torture, it's torture. Just look it up online at near death experiences. Some people's actually died and went to hell and Jesus sent them back so they could have a second chance. There's even people that's done that who were atheists, who didn't believe in God whatsoever, that sacrificed stuff to the devil. That's how bad they was into it. That's how bad they hated or didn't believe in God. They sacrificed to the devil. They worshiped Satan. And they died and went to hell and then seeing Jesus and he got him out and sent him back for a second chance and believe me that person changed you can hear their stories yourself go to YouTube near-death experiences NDE is the abbreviation for what their videos are very good 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 ones and bad ones but they're all good if you get to come back and try again if you're going to go Jesus didn't have to give them a second chance. But they did. He did. And thank God because if not, they would have been suffering forever in hell. They'll tell you how bad it is and what they seen down there. People think it's a joke that people are making this up, but it's not. One day people will find out the hard way, and that's going to be the really sad thing. If they would only have believed. If you only would believe. Our psalm today is Psalm 14, the director of music of David. The fool says in his heart, there is no God. They are corrupt. Their deeds are vile. There is no one who does good. The Lord looks down from heaven on all mankind to see if there are any who understand, any who seek God. All have turned away. All have become corrupt. There is no one who does good, not even one. Do all these evildoers know nothing? They devour my people as though eating bread. They never call on the Lord, but there they are overwhelmed with dread. For God is present in the company of the righteous. You evildoers frustrate the plans of the poor, but the Lord is their refuge. Oh, that salvation for Israel would come out of Zion. When the Lord restores his people, let Jacob rejoice and Israel be glad. And that was Psalm 14 for the director of music of David. Wasn't that a beautiful psalm? I could have kept reading it on and on, but that's where it is. Short psalm. And our Proverbs today is Proverbs chapter 19, verse 17. Whoever is kind to the poor lends to the Lord, and he will reward them for what they have done. Because remember, like we talked about, when you're doing something to or for someone, it is like you doing that to Jesus or to God, our Heavenly Father. It is like you doing that to them. So remember that next time, you know, you're going to do something. Would you do that to Jesus? because it is just like you doing it to Jesus or to God.
you have a child and they're you're crazy about that child you're a good parent you know what I'm saying if someone done something horrible to your child would that not be like them doing something horrible to you as well see now maybe you can understand the what I'm talking about better the feeling better and if somebody did something great for your child like your child got in a car wreck heaven forbid and everybody just drove by and wouldn't help but one person stopped and helped your child and was able to get your child help and was there for them when nobody else was would that not be like that person doing it for you as well would, would you not feel that way? Well, that's what we're talking about here. All right, guys. Well, that was our Bible reading for today. I hope it touched your guys' hearts. I hope you guys have a blessed rest of your day. Let's bring those souls to Jesus, and God willing, we'll see you guys again tomorrow with another Bible reading. Bye, guys. God bless.